Hi, everyone. So this is just a quick follow-up analysis um, of the poem that you should have read at this point. Um, I'm just going to do a basic cold read, and then I'm going to go back and analyze the poem. So, My City by James Weldon Johnson. When I come down to sleep death's endless night, the threshold of the unknown dark to cross, what to me then will be the keenest loss when this bright world blurs on my fading sight? Will it be that no more I shall see the trees or smell the flowers or hear the singing birds or watch the flashing streams or patient herds? No, I am sure it will be none of these. But ah, Manhattan sights and sounds, her smells, her crowds, her throbbing force, the thrill that comes from being of, a, of her a part, her subtle spells, her shining towers, her avenues, her slums. Oh God, the stark, unutterable pity to be dead and never again behold my city. So you'll notice right off the bat that the poem is broken down into two stanzas. So if you notice that there's 14 lines by just observing a poem, you should automatically be thinking that this could potentially be a sonnet, which it is. It's a type of sonnet called a Petrarchian sonnet. Um, on Valentine's Day, we analyze two Shakespearean sonnets. And if you remember, Shakespearean sonnets are made up of three quatrains. So you have three stanzas of four lines each, and then you'll have a rhyming couplet. So the rhyme scheme would be A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, and the rhyming couplet would be G, G. A Petrarchian sonnet is named after the Italian Francesco Petrarch, um, who was writing sonnets during the Italian Renaissance in the 14th century. Um, he basically uh, wrote many, many sonnets that were in this particular form, which I think fits better with the Italian language. Um, and it's made up of what we call an octave, which I'm just going to quickly highlight here. Okay, so we have eight lines that make up the octave. Okay, and then to follow that, we have, I'll change the color here, okay, a sestet, which would be the second stanza, which is made up of six lines. Um, so we'll look at the octave first, okay? And if we wanted to note the rhyme scheme, we could see night, okay, rhymes with sight, <clears throat> cross, and loss rhyme. So this would be A, B, B, A. Trees does not want rhyme with any of these end words. And so what does trees rhyme with? It would be these. So we have A, B, B, A, C, D, D, C. And the sestet would be spells and smells. So E, F, E, F, G, G. Okay, so returning to the octave, we can see the speaker muse about what he will miss once he's dead, basically. Okay, when he sleeps death's endless night. I gotta figure out how to underline that. Okay. So here, endless night. Okay, we're talking about death here. The threshold, which is a doorway, okay, of the unknown dark to cross. Again, just emphasizing death. What to me will be the sharpest loss? So what will he miss the most after he's dead? Um, when this bright world blurs on my fading sight. Will it be that no more I shall see the trees? Okay, so the trees are part of the natural world, right? So he's considering that perhaps he will no longer get to see the trees. And is that what he's going to miss the most? I don't think so. Um, he considers the smell of the flowers. He considers hearing the birds sing. He considers the flashing streams or the patient herds of perhaps animals. Okay, but then he says, no, I am sure it will be none of these. Okay, so he answers his question by asserting that it is not going to be anything of the natural world. The very first line of the sestet, you notice that there is a change. So this is 
what we call a volta, V-O-L-T-A. There's a shift in the poem in this sestet here. And he begins to talk about what he will miss after he's gone. He will miss the crowds. Notice that he is personifying the city, right? So he is calling the city a har. So he's personifying the city, okay? He's going to miss her crowds. He's going to miss the throbbing force. Um, and you can just think about that here as imagery, like the city is alive. The thrill that comes from her being a part, her subtle spells, um, her shining towers, you could picture probably um, buildings. Okay, her avenues, her slums. Okay, oh God, the stark, unutterable pity to be dead and never again behold my city. Here in this rhyming couplet at the end, we could see the speaker really assert how sad he would be if he were to die and never again be able to see his city. Um, <clears throat> this makes sense for an African-American who found refuge in a city. He had come from the natural world, probably um, his ancestors or maybe his family had come from down south. And when they moved to Harlem, he was able to become the successful person that he becomes, right? So if we're likening the speaker to James Weldon Johnson, we know that James Weldon Johnson was much more successful up in the north. He actually was able to become a principal and a teacher, um, head of the NAACP, um, and so on, right? So I hope that this analysis was helpful to you. Um, I don't think it was an incredibly difficult poem, but it did seem like there was some confusion. So make sure you reach out to me if you have any questions throughout this home instruction. All right?